This is the question asked in today's skill rack daily challenge. So in the first line of our input we are given the values of r and c and after that we are given a r cross c integer matrix as input. So in this integer matrix our task is to find the co-prime integers in every row of the matrix. So totally there are three rows in our sample input one. So for every row we have to find the co-prime integers. So let us start with our first row. So the first pair of integers in the first row are the integer 2 and 4. So now we have to check whether the integers 2 and 4 are co-prime or not. So two integers are said to be co-prime if the highest common factor is equal to 1. So here for the integers 2 and 4 they can be divided by 2. So the highest common factor cannot be 1. So these two integers are not co-prime. So now if the integers are not a co-prime then we should move to the next pair. So the next pair is integer 4 and 6. Again the HCF of the integer 4 and 6. So we can divide both the integers 4 and 6 by 2. So the HCF is not equal to 1. So again the integer 4 and 6 are not co-prime. So again we should check for the next pair. So the next pair is 6, 8. So again we can divide both of the integers by 2. So these two integers are not co-prime. So the next set is 8 and 16. So the integer 8 and 16 have a HCF 8 itself. So again the HCF is not equal to 1. So they are not co-prime. And now the last pair 16 and 14. So they can be divided by 2. So these two integers are not co-prime. So in the first row none of the integers are co-prime. If we are not able to find even a single co-prime integer in a row then for the particular row we have to print minus 1 as our output. So for the first row in our output we are printing minus 1. So that will be the output for the first row. If we are not able to find even a single co-prime integer then we have to print minus 1 in our output. So this is what we should be doing for every row of the given input. So now we should move to our second row. So in the second row the first pair of integers is 5 and 6. So here the 5 and 6 the HCF for 5 and 6 is 1. So no integer other than 1 can divide both these integers. So the HCF is equal to 1. So the integer 5 and 6 are considered as co-prime. So in our output we can see that we print the integer 5 as well as 6. So now we shall move to the next pair. So the next pair of integers is 6 with 8 but 6 is already a co-prime. So 8 can be paired with either 6 or 9. So first let us check with 6 and 8. So the integers 6 and 8 cannot be a co-prime because both of the integers can be commonly divided with 2. So they cannot be a co-prime because their HCF is not equal to 1. So we move on to the next pair and the next pair is the integer 8, 10, 9. So the integer 8 and 9 can be commonly divided only by 1. So their HCF is equal to 1. So these two integers 8 and 9 are also a co-prime. So in our output we print the integers 8 as well as 9. So now the next pair is 9 and 15. So the integers 9 and 15 are not a co-prime because the common factor can be 3. So 3 divides both 9 as well as 15. So 9 and 15 cannot be a co-prime. So we check for co-prime for 15 with 16. So the next pair 15 and 16 can be commonly divided by 1. So the HCF of the two integers 15 and 16 is equal to 1. So they are co-prime. So in our output we print the integers 15 and 16. So all the integers present in the second row are co-prime when either paired with left integer or paired with the right integer. So all the integers in the second row are co-prime. So for second row we print all the integers in our output. So similarly we should also check for the third row in our matrix. So the first pair is 5, 6. So 5, 6 is co-prime because the HCF is equal to 1. So we print 5 and 6 and after that the integer 6 and 7. So 6 and 7 is also co-prime. So we print the integer 7 because 6 already we have printed and now the pair 7 and 14 the HCF is not equal to 1 and for 14 and 21 they can be divided by 7 and 21 and 30 they can be divided by 3. So none of the pair in the third row other than 5, 6 and 6, 7 has HCF is equal to 1. 
so in our output we print the integer 5 6 and 7 so we ignore all the remaining integers so this is how we print our output so using the same procedure we will be solving our sample input too so let us use it for testing our program now let us see how to write a C program for this so first I have defined a function named gcd so let us start with our main program first I have created two integer variables named r and c and in the next line I am accepting the values of the integers r and c and after that I am creating a new integer array named mat it is a two dimensional array of size r cross c so we will be storing our input matrix into this two dimensional array so now we have to accept our input so I am creating a loop that iterates from 0 to r so in every row we should be accepting c integers so again I am creating a j loop that iterates from 0 to c and in every iteration we will be accepting the integer and storing the integer into the array named mat so after the execution of the j loop we would have accepted the integers of one row so soon after accepting the integers of one row we are going to check for co primes and print the integers so to do that first i am creating a new integer array named check of size 50 and i am setting initially all of the integers to 0 in that array and after that i am creating another new flag variable and setting its value to 0 so we will be using to check whether we have find any co prime or not so now again i am creating a j loop so this j loop iterates from 0 to c and in every iteration we will be checking the gcd of the current integer with the next integer so that would be the pair so in every iteration of this j loop i am including a if condition and i am finding the gcd of matrix of ij and matrix of ij plus 1 and here in every iteration we will be checking the integer present at the jth index with j plus 1th index so that is the reason why we are iterating only till c minus 1 so if gcd of the two integers is equal to 1 then we set the integers at the current index of check array as 1 so initially all the values in the check array will be 0 and if the gcd of j and j plus 1 is equal to 1 then we set check of j is equal to 1 and check of j plus 1 is equal to 1 and we also set flag is equal to 1 because we have found at least one pair of co prime integers we will be using this check array just for our reference whether the integer at the particular index is a co prime or not if it is a co prime then we set the integer at the particular index in the check array as 1 else it will be 0 so now let us see how this function gcd works so this is the euclidean's method so this is an efficient method for finding the gcd of two numbers so in the arguments we will be accepting two integers and then if a is equal to 0 we return b else we return again gcd of b mod a and a recursively we will be calling this function gcd again and again until a becomes equal to 0 so when we do like this at one stage a will become equal to 0 and at that case the b will be the gcd so this is the euclidean's method so now after the execution of the j loop we would have found the gcd of every pair of integers in the row and if the pair is a co prime then we would have updated our check array so now using the values present in the check array we should be printing our output so again i am creating a j loop so in the third j loop the values iterate from 0 to c and in every iteration if check of j is equal to 1 then we print the integer present at the current index of matrix of ij so those integers would be the co prime integers so using the value of check we will be printing our output and finally we will also be checking the value of flag so if the co prime is present then the flag value would have been updated to 1 and if none of the integers are co prime then the flag value will still remain 0 so in those cases we will be checking whether flag is equal to 0 or not so if flag is equal to 0 then we print minus 1 and after that we also print a new line so that we will get our output in the design pattern so now let us check our program with sample test cases so this is our sample input 1 and we have our expected output here so we also get the same integers as our output so now let us also check our program with the sample input 2 So for sample input 2, this is our expected output. 
so again we get the correct integers as our output so this is the logic behind today's daily challenge thank you for watching